The truth is our focus and we give justice to your curiosity. Good morning Philippines! The latest news spotted only here on CUT News, providing you with the most credible news for today. Equal Protection Clause, Absolute or Relative? The Equal Protection Clause in the Constitution is not absolute, but is subject to reasonable classification. If the groupings are characterized by substantial distinctions, that make real differences. One class may be treated and regulated differently from the other. The court has explained the nature of the equal protection guarantee in this model. The equal protection of the law is against undue favor and individual or class privilege as well as the hostile discrimination or the oppression of inequality. It is not intended to prohibit legislation, which is limited either in the object to which it is directed or by territory within which it is to operate. It does not demand absolute equality among residents. It merely requires that all persons shall be treated alike under like circumstances and conditions, both as to privileges conferred and liabilities enforced. To further explain the Equal Protection Clause, Attorney Catalina will be with us today. Welcome to CUT News, Attorney Catalina. It's an honor to be with you on this topic. Pleasure is all mine, Dan. Thank you very much for inviting me here at CUT News. It's a, it's a pleasure always being here. I'm nostalgic. I always enjoy being here. Thank you very much. All right, let's start. Mr. Catalina, when is it permissible to qualify the existence of equality? It is an interesting point. The one answer created by legislators and the judiciary is to qualify equality. Now, considering the world's ever-changing diversity and times, categorizing equality is one of the most difficult tasks. In that sense, many political law cases or constitutional cases still go to the Supreme Court for final judgment due to the ambiguity of the clause. Although we have jurisprudence to assist us in dealing with these issues, the changing times have rendered certain jurisprudence if not obsolete, at least out of date. As a result, the new law on the subject emerges making this phrase a living provision. How do we characterize equality? There is no specific categorization for it, but there is a requirement on how to create a classification for the group. Now, the four requirements are as follows. One, it must be based upon substantial distinctions. Two, it must be germane to the purpose of the law. Three, it must be limited to the existing conditions only. And four, it must apply equally to all members of the class. Ooh, that's a fairly deep, but I'll take use of this opportunity. How can we tell if these four requirements have been fulfilled? It must have substantive distinctions. When we say substantive distinctions, we mean anything that truly really distinguishes this group and makes them unique. Now in this category, super superficial differences cannot be utilized as a classification. Rather, significant and substantive distinctions must exist. There must be something that stands out and distinguishes the group from the rest. For example, in the Philippines, senior citizens, men and women, under and over age, height as a qualification for some employment, religion or indigenous groups. These are significant distinctions that make a significant difference and can be classed as group or separate groupings. It must be germane to the purpose of the law. Even though the classification is based on significant differences, it is invalid if it's not relevant to the aim of the legislation. When classifications are founded 
unfair and genuine distinctions. One class may be treated differently than another. Classification does not breach the equal protection guarantee if it is relevant to the objective of the legislation. It affects all the members of the class and applies equally to present and future conditions. The Republic Act 9262 or the VAUSI are two examples of this. Men and women are classified differently, yet they are not immune to standard laws such as penal and civil laws as well as our statutes made by the legislation. It must not be limited to existing conditions. The third need is that classification be enforced not only for the present, but for the duration of the problem being addressed. An example for this is in the book of Isagani Cruz, People vs. Kaya. The legislation forbade the members of non-Christian tribes from drinking liquor, claiming that their lack of culture and unfamiliarity with this type of drink made them more susceptible to its effects than their mo more civilized compatriots. Now, who are less affected by it? The Supreme Court upheld the classification in this original form. As long as the distinction between the two groups remain in this situation, if non-Christian tribes are reached by technology and become increasingly exposed to the world's events, restrictions can be lifted. The same is true for the implementation of the VAUSI or the Republic Act 9262. As long as women are physically weaker than men, the legislation will always apply. It must apply equally to all members of the class. If all members of the class are not treated equally in terms of the rights granted and obligations imposed, the classification will be deemed invalid. For example, a sterile woman would still, would still be entitled to the advantages of regulations safeguarding her sex reproductive capabilities, such as one forbidding women from working that require them to be constantly on their feet. Her inability to carry children does not diminish her status as a woman. Now, consequently, whether a woman is sterile or fertile, she has the right to be included in whatever law is enacted. Thank you so much, Attorney Catalina. Thank you for accepting our invitation. I am confident that majority of the viewers are learning today. Now for a case update, Colonel Alain Duarte is here. Give us the details of the case. Before we get to the court's decision, let's take a look what happened in this case. Subic Special Economic Zone and granted there to special privileges such as tax exemptions and duty-free importation of raw materials, capital, equipment to business enterprises and residents located and residing in the said zone. On June 10, 1993, President Ramos issued Executive Order 97 clarifying the application of tax and duty incentives. On June 19, 1993, the President issued Executive Order 97A specifying the area within which the tax and duty-free privilege was operative. The secured area consisting of the presently fenced-in former Subic Naval Base. On October 26, 1994, Conrado L. Chu et al. challenged before the Supreme Court the constitutionality of EO 97A for allegedly being violative of their right, the right to equal protection of the laws. In as much as the order granted tax and duty incentives, only those businesses and residents within the secured area of the Subic Special Economic Zone and denying them to those who live within the zone but outside such fenced-in territory. The court ruled, no, the EO 97A is not violative to equal protection clause, neither it is discriminatory. The fundamental right of the equal protection of the law is not absolute but subject to reasonable classification. The classification occasioned by EO 97A was not reasonable, capricious, or unfounded. 
it was based rather on fair and substantive considerations that were germane to the legislative purpose. There are substantial differences between the big investors who are being lured to establish and operate their industries in the so-called secured area and the present business operators outside the area. On the other hand, we are talking of billion peso investments and thousands of new jobs. And on the other hand, definitely none of such magnitude. In the first, the economic impact will be national. In the second, only local. Even more important, at this time, the business activities outside the secured area are not likely to have any impact in achieving the true purpose of the law which is to turn the former military base into a productive use for the benefit of the Philippine economy. There is then any hardly reasonable basis to extend to them the benefits and incentives accorded in RA 7227. The constitutional rights of the equal protection of the laws is not violated by an executive order issued pursuant to law granting tax and duty incentives only to business and residents within the secured area and denying them to those who live within the zone but outside such pens in territory. The constitution does not require absolute equality among residents. It is enough that all persons under like circumstances or considerations are given the same privileges and required to follow the same obligations. In short, a classification based on valid and reasonable standards does not violate the Equal Protection Clause. So there we go. The court ruled that EO 97-8 is not violative of the Equal Protection Clause. Thank you very much, Colonel Alain Ugarte, for giving us the nice explanation about the case. Equal Protection Clause, Absolute or Relative?